if you have something like the Koch curve, right? When we dissect this thing, we find that its dimensions are not quite one-dimensional like a line, nor two-dimensional like a, you know, a normal shape with area. Okay, it's somewhere in between. This idea of taking an object that's, you know, trying to straddle the dimensions is the idea we're going to further push on today. Okay, it's a, this idea that, you know, see how I've got a line, right? And a line has how many dimensions again? A line? A line. a line just has one dimension, right? Now when you curl it up in this way, it kind of gets, the shape that you end up getting has more than one dimension, but not quite two. Okay? This idea that mathematicians were trying to explore was, could you twist and turn a line such that it did get all the way to being two dimensional? A line, can we twist and turn it in such a way that you get a two dimensional shape out of it? Okay. So. Now, because the idea is to take a line and in order to be properly two-dimensional, it's got to visit all the different spaces uh, in our plane, right? It's got to get to every single one. It's got to fill up that space. So therefore, the heading you can make, this thing that um, mathematicians were trying to explore was called a space-filling curve. So even though it's the idea of a line, like straight lines, you can see little intervals all joined together, mathematicians call this a curve because as you'll see what we're going to get, it does bend and twist and curve around and try to fill up this space. Okay? So we're going to have, have a look at a series of space filling curves. Right? Alright, so I've got a couple of interesting ones for you. The first one, the first one that we've got is called the piano curve. The piano curve. Yes, <coughs> it's an A. The piano curve. Okay. Now to demonstrate this, here is the uh, the basic premise of the problem, and here's where your ruler will come in handy. If you've got colours, that will also be useful. I use red instead. The idea is to say, all right, if I have an area, a plane, right, something like say this, I can divide up this plane into different parts, right? I can subdivide now. We were doing something like this yesterday when we were trying to measure the dimensions of something, right? Now, what kind of curve could I draw that would be able to visit all the different parts of the plane, right? Now, I could do this in a variety of ways, okay? So, piano, sorry, this shouldn't be 2 by 2 it should be 3 by 2 Where's my razor? Can anyone see the eraser? Actually, I'll just add one. Because you've already probably drawn this. Okay. So I've got a 3x3 three three grid. How do I visit every single spot on this 3x3 three three grid? Okay. This guy, Piano, he said, okay, here's a way. Here's a scheme I can think of, right? Uh, different color. If I start in the bottom, and I want to go in a logical way so I don't miss any points, because remember, what I'm trying to do is get to, I want to fill up the entire space. In theory, I want to get to every single point in the plane. Okay? How about I start down here, okay, so I'll just draw a little point to indicate my start point, and then I'll go through this kind of the way that I literally go through shopping aisles. When I'm at Woolies, right, I go down one aisle, okay, and then I kind of turn around, and then I just go down the next aisle, right? And then I just turn around and then I go down the next aisle. And that's where I finish. Okay? So you can see, I divided up the plane into nine places, right? And I've visited every single one. I've been pretty logical about it. I haven't missed any. Okay? Does that make sense? So this is one way of mapping out all these different 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spots on the curve. Okay? Spots in the plane. But you can see, obviously, I've kind of missed a lot of spots, right? So this is why we're looking at this under fractals. I can take this curve and I can make it exhibit scale symmetry by just subdividing smaller. Okay, so watch this. Draw another grid for me. Draw another grid. Again, we'll make it three by three. But now, what I want to do is I want to be more detailed. And here's where the fractal element of this comes in. Okay? I want to imagine, like, scale symmetry, yeah? See this little square down here? This little square 
is just like the whole square that I started with, just smaller. Right? Do you agree with that? It's just another version I've just you know, zoomed out and so it looks smaller. Okay? So there's no reason why I can't, for instance, treat this one square just like I treated the entire space here. I could subdivide this as a 3 by 3 square. Okay? I would start down here okay? and then I would just go through the aisles. You can see what I've done is I have visited more points in this little first square than this one has, right? You can see I've, I've visited more parts of the plane, okay? But now I've got all these rests to go through. Well, I'm going to go through them in exactly the same order that I went through here. In fact, if you go back to your first... Hello, somebody to wake up in a while, okay? If I go through my first 3x3 three three grid, right? You can see I've gone through in a certain order, right? I started here, 1, 2, 3, and I crossed over to here, 4, 5, 6, and then I went 7, 8, 9, okay? So I've done that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in here, right? But that's really just 1. So now I'm going to go up to the next one. I'm going to go up to here. Okay. So you can see, in fact, I'm going to take all of my nine squares and I'm going to divide them into nine, right? So let's divide them all up. Let's do this. Remember what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to visit every spot in the plane, right? Every single point, every zero dimensional space, right? So I'm here, right? I've done one little square and I wish you to use a different color to indicate now one of these piano curves, up and down the aisles, one of them is finished. And now I'm going to go up into here and I'm going to start another piano curve. You see the scale symmetry? Right? So that means I go here, up the aisles, cross, down the aisles, cross, up the aisles. It's another piano curve. Because I started in a different corner from where I started before, the orientation is different. You see it's, it's flipped over, okay? but it's still a piano curve. It's just twisted around a little bit differently. Right? Again, this is um, number two, square number two. And I've visited far more points in this square than my original one did. Okay? I'm going to go now up to here, right? One, two, three. So I'm going to chuck another piano curve in. Here's my blue transition line, right? And then a new curve begins. One, two, three, four, five. Like so. You can start to see where this is going now, right? I went one, two, three, that's all the way up one aisle. Now I need to cross into the next aisle, over here. Right? So I'm starting up in this corner. There's my little break. And I'm going to start a new curve, okay? So, down, up, down. Okay. I'm going to stop talking through each individual one now, and I'm just going to finish the piano curve, because you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going to follow my original path, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But each time, for each square, I'm putting in a whole new piano curve. Okay? So, let's try and do this. 